In this tutorial, we're going to use Reflex Motion Morph to create a loop. We could also use the technique I showed in the Replacing Missing Frames tutorial to create a loop by creating a new frame between the first and last images of the clip. But in this one, I will show a different technique. Instead of trying to connect the last frame and the first frame, we will use a transition interval of a few frames for a smoother result. Let's get started. As I've said in previous tutorials, you should be familiar with the basics of creating a morph before watching this tutorial and should go back and watch some of the basics first if you're not familiar with these concepts. You can download the project called TUT0031 Seamless Loops and you can work along with me or you can try the tutorial on your own after. First, let's take a look at our original green screen shot. This is Jose, and he's doing four cartwheels. We don't want him to get too dizzy, so we just have him do one, and then we'll create a seamless loop of never-ending cartwheels. We can take a quick look at the result, and then I will show you how this magic was done. So here's Jose cartwheeling across the screen without ever getting dizzy. The first step is to create a pre-comp and key the green screen, which I've already done. If you go to the number one keyed footage in the project, you'll see this. Then I create a new composition that I called to reset time to start loop and stay in place. You can go to composition settings and change the duration to the desired length of loop. We are first offsetting the shot, so it will be at the first frame of the loop and then I am repositioning him so that he does a cartwheel in place which will bring the frames we want to morph into closer alignment. As we've seen in previous tutorials this makes for a much better and easier to produce morph. After we create the endless loop we will add the motion back in to make him travel across the screen. The next thing we'll do is take the offset and repositioned comp number two, and create another composition that I called three, morph between begin and end of sequence. And we will add an additional copy of the same offset reposition comp to the new composition. We have offset the second shot so that it lines up to where he just finishes his first cartwheel and is about to start the second one. We will line up this two shot to start the first cartwheel again. We will get them as close as we can in terms of matching the arms and legs and bodies up. Now you see that they overlap a little in time. This overlap in time will be where we do the morph to create the transition between the start and end of the segment. Now we add reflex motion morph to our first shot. This will become our from shot and you see that the red frame indicates that we need to pick a two shot. We go to the effect controls and where it says warped to layer, we choose to reset time to start of loop and to stay in place. We can also change the display to unwarped from. We can add a couple splines the same way we did in the previous motion morph tutorial. Use the pen tool and create the from spline, duplicate the spline, adjust the spline to match the features on the from image, and add keyframes for the frames that need them. Next, do the same for the to image. And then at this point, we could add any additional splines needed. Except we have this amazing feature that we might want to give a try first because it could save us loads of time. We go to one of the in-between frames here. We can see that by using auto align we can get a pretty good match without using any additional splines. It's like magic. I think this will actually work great so let's move on to the next step. But first, we need to turn off the visibility of the two layers so we don't have both layers showing. With Reflex Motion Morph, we can still morph to a layer even though the visibility is turned off. Note that if Auto Align does not work well on your particular footage, that you can continue to add pairs of splines to refine the morph. We can set the global warp percentage from 0% at frame 0 to 100% at frame 12. Since a morph is a combination of warping and blending, we also need to animate the global blend percentage. 
so 0% at frame 0 and 100% at frame 12. The reason we want to morph the end section of the shot to the beginning of the shot is because this way, when we repeat it, there will be no jump from the end to the beginning. It will be a seamless transition. Now we need to make a pre-comp for the loop that I called for attach morph transition to end of original sequence. This is the original keyed offset and reposition shot from comps 1 and 2 and the morphed into beginning shot that we just made in comp 3. We offset them so we do just what the title implies. We attach the morphed transition to the end of the original sequence. Now we take this pre-comp and we make another new composition and this will be our loop. This is called 5 setup loop. We just have to go to layer time and enable time remapping and we can set 0 at frame 0 and then 39 at frame 37 because that was the transition point from the previous composition. We can simply copy those two keyframes and go to the frame after the first loop, which would be frame 38, and paste them and then go to the next frame after the second loop and paste again and continue doing this until we get to the end. We can add another reposition now so he can travel across the screen while cartwheeling. Let's go ahead and do a RAM preview. So this is how you can use Reflex Motion Morph to create a seamless loop.